Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Sham Raghunandan here. We are at the India International Center today. Today is a proud privilege to introduce the Iodine Man of India and Padmashri Awardee Dr. Sandhya Khan Shambhaji Pandal is here. And our dear friend Mr. Anand Raj is here. Dr. B. R. Patil is there. From all the way from Pune, Mr. Anil Ganaut has also come. And today the purpose of gathering is here to uh, speak to you and inform you that today is a proud uh, privilege and honor for me to introduce Dr. Atul Kare, who is the Under Secretary General of United Nations, and he has given his precious time to us. And he is a proud son of India. He has been serving at the highest time of the United Nations. And the welcome on the uh, show, sir. And it's a very great honor for and you being a good friend of Dr. Chandrakant Pandav. And yes, going through you know, since you are at the UNO and you're going through the post-pandemic situation in the country, uh, we would request you to give us the uh, preventive for the future, if at all, if something uh, like micro Omicron or some other thing comes up, how we can uh, safeguard the India and you being a, a son of uh, proud India, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I am not only a friend of Dr. Pandav, I am actually his younger brother. <laughs> many, many years ago, when I joined the All India Institute of Medical Sciences as a medical student in 1976, Dr. Pandav had already graduated. He was doing his internship. But he took me under his wings. Uh, he was the first uh, chairman of the film society of uh, uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and I was his executive member. Uh, so uh, we learned so much from him. It is a great uh, honor for me to be here with him that, uh, and to say that the country has finally recognized, uh, to a certain extent, his contributions, uh, I hope that uh, in the future, the country will recognize more and more uh, his contributions to ensuring that there is no more iodine deficiency and that preventive mental illnesses, particularly in children, can be completely avoided so that our country can develop. It will become only when the children, the young, the youth, they are empowered and they have the capacity to do it. So I hope that the path which has been shown by him will be followed by him. Similarly, for the pandemic, I think we have to follow the path which uh, Dr. Panda has shown. He was discussing with me that today we have a problem. It is called the problem of idiots. The mechanism by which uh, internet uh, disinformation is leading to obstruction of treatment, proper treatment. And I think what we need to do is to be evidence-based, as he says again and again, to be evidence-based, to make our own judgments, to take the right precautions, as has been suggested by everybody, but then, of course, to ensure that we can move further, particularly with vaccination and with, uh, as I said, general precautions. So I think we are doing well. We will look forward to Dr. Panda with his expertise of epidemiology and community medicine to continue to lead the country and to lead us uh, in the world uh, to ensure that this and future pandemics can be controlled. Thank you, Dr. Atulkar. Such a wonderful and being a shishya of a Guruji, you have been expressed very gratitude and tribute. At this uh, stage, I would uh, request our uh, uh, champion of public health and uh, HOD of the community medicine. 45 long years he has been served in uh, All India Medical Institute of Science, New Delhi. Uh, Dr. Chandrakant Pandav, I would love to hear from you about your student, about your brother, and uh, you have been uh, seen him from the uh, very long years, all these years, and today he is holding the highest position of the UNO. How do you feel it? And uh, please share your views, please. Actually, first I want to express my gratitude to Rajkumari Abrutko. She was the first cabinet minister for health and family welfare, and she was the first woman member to be of the cabinet of, of the cabinet when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was the prime minister. The All India Institute of Medical Sciences was her dream child. I am using the word D. There are 22 institutions established. I call them aims like institution, but there is only one D All India Institute which is known worldwide to give best quality of treatment at affordable price. And Rajkumari made sure that everybody working in the institute stayed on the campus. Class 4, class 3, class 2, all the faculty members. The appointment to them was only given under one condition that they have to stay on the campus. So it was truly a Gurukul system that was established and both Atul and I are very fortunate to be a product of that particular place. Now, what I want to share with you is that 
my student, my younger brother, Dr. Adatukadev, had a very interesting career graph. First, he was selected in IIT Kanpur. <laughs> he spent one year, then he came to all in his to his MBBS. And after MBBS, he went to appear for civil services. He spent one year in IPS, Indian Police Service. And he was traveling with Rajiv Gandhi along with another classmate of his, Dr. Madhav Murta. And then he went to Indian Foreign Service. And he spent most of his time in Africa, African countries, also in Timor Leste, where he was decorated. Whatever field Atul Kare has chosen, he excelled into that. We have been taught in AIMS that you will compromise with anything in life, but with, but, but you will never compromise with excellence. So he has kept those high standards, and I am very proud that both the Secretary General of the United Nations wanted Dr. Atul Kare by name to be part of his cabinet. So for a guru, the proudest moment in his life is when his shishya does better than him. And this is a classical example where the shishya has done better than the guru. Nanyava. What is Guru Shishya Parampara and Guru Vandana today is happening? We have been <laughs> lucky enough to see both of you also. At this stage, I think uh, Dr. Abdul Kare, you have done a very great service to the, uh, not only the, the Vasudeva Kutumba, the whole world you have been taking care. And uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Chandrakant Pana always says that 21st century will be the Vishnu Guru, uh, Swami Vivekananda, what he has dreamt, what he spoke uh, all these hundred years back. And today I would love that that Vishwa Guru, the role model is Dr. Atul Kare. Sir, looking at you and both of you is a really a blessing and disgrace for us. It's a lifetime dream come true for us. Such a wonderful uh, officials and doctors who have been assembled here. And I would like to ask one more question, Dr. Chandrakant Panda. You being the champion of public health and community medicine, and you being the founder, president of the Global Health and uh, Health Care and Wellness uh, Research Institute in New Delhi, uh, October 2nd, you formed it. And you always say that uh, we don't believe in uh, eminence-based therapy, you believe in evidence-based therapy. I would love that to uh, seek the same uh, information so that the people, those who are watching us and the government of India and the health minister, the healthcare professional should take a leaf out of our both the expert and what you collecting for Thank you so much. Actually, this is the 20th pandemic in the human history, so we're not new to the pandemic. I fail to understand why COVID-19 got so much of importance. There are a lot of theories about it. I don't want to go into the details, but I want to tell one important mistake that has been done, especially in India. This was a race that was that had to be done. You have to run the race and win it. Rabbit is very good in running, but they chose the fish to advise the government of India. People who are neonatologists, cardiologists, cardiothoric surgeons, gastroenterologists, also very good. They never chose the public health experts, epidemiologists, behavioral scientists, management experts. So to me, I openly have said on many occasions, this is a blunder which India has done. One thing we must learn from the history is never repeat the same mistakes. Thank you. Dr. Chandrakant Pandav, that uh, evidence-based therapy have been identified a lot of uh, evidence-based therapies you are bringing under one roof. And uh, can we know that your uh, vision for uh, Vishwa Guru India and what is the uh, guidance you can give to the healthcare professionals where there is a wide gap between the allopathy practitioner and the Ayush practitioner. Maybe somewhere they are all brother of the same modern medicine and ancient medicine and Vedic medicine. Why don't we integrate all these uh, professionals for the betterment of this India and better health for uh, each rural, each common man, each army of this India. Here again, I have a very strong opinion. It is the British colonial rule that ruined our system. Actually, science of life. I, I do that science of life. When the Britishers came, they focused all their attention on curative medicine. Because they were interested in the health of their troops, not about the common man. In fact, one of the British officers said, that let the Indians die like rats and cats and dogs. I'm more concerned about the health of my troops and the focus of security medicine. Unfortunately, even after independence, the, our health planners and policymakers did not pay attention to the Ayurveda system. To me, these are all artificial design divisions. Ultimately, when patient is sick, he's interested in getting cured. cured. He's not interested with Ayurvedic, homeopathic, telepathic, naturopathic. He wants a cure, he wants relief from pain and suffering. That is the greatest blunder we have done. We are living in silos. I am not talking of mixopathies. 
whenever a patient comes, I had to discuss with Dr. Ramalik Swami, who was my mentor and director of All India Institute. I told him, sir, when will you have, when will you have Ayurveda in medical colleges? He said, Chandrakant, this will not happen in my life. You make sure you take it forward. This was the conversation we had in 1980. So on 2nd of October 2021, we started a, a clinic where we brought all the branches. We got 45 different disciplines working with us. And I'm very privileged to share with you that Suresh Joshi, popular as Bayaji, came for the office. So did Menka Gandhi, the member of parliament. So here we established a facility in South Delhi, where we decide the discipline based on the patient's symptoms and what is best for him. So actually, it is an integration, it is integrated health sciences that we have brought together. That's how the approach should be done. I also want, want to warn my doctor colleagues that they must learn to listen. Whenever they go to a private practitioner, in two minutes he'll take his history. They spend not more than two minutes and immediately they'll prescribe like BT, CT, and T. 90% of the diagnosis is based, based on history, 5% on clinical examination, 3% on routine laboratory, and only 2% by high, high end. But we have focused again on high end investigation, which are not necessary. Good old days, the way that used to take your pulse. We hardly touch patients these days. Kali baat karte ki aapko kya taklif aur do minute mein aapko bhagate. That's a wrong culture that is there. The doctors, my esteemed colleagues, should learn to listen to what the patient has to say. Thank you very much. As a champion of public health, Dr. Chandrakant Mandal, you rightly put forward the message is loud and clear for the health ministry as well as the Irish ministry, where you should narrow down the difference between the both the stream of medicine. We should always speak only science. Nothing but science, so that we must understand, act according to person, is diseases, the disease is the destination. With that, sometimes uh, lifestyle modification, sometimes Ayurveda, sometimes your uh, sleeping pattern, sometimes your physical exercises or the yoga. Maybe we can all reverse most of the diseases without any pill or powder. And I think, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Tulkar. Finally, and Dr. finally I just out. want to end with my favorite statement. It is not allopathy, homeopathy, naturopathy. What we are lacking in practice of medicine is sympathy, empathy, passion, and compassion. This needs to be overemphasized time and again. I repeat, sympathy, empathy, empathy passion, passion, and compassion, compassion is the manavata which leads to the humanity. And I go over to the studio. Thank you very much, uh, Rajkumar Sharma. Back to studio now. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Is a life yeah. day, na? Then you have to go to UN. No, 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 no. If you say all India Institute of Medical yeah. Sciences, yeah. you should have translated it as Akhil Bharatiya Chikitsak Sanstha. Correct. Yeah. But we didn't do that. Uh -huh. We yeah. said Akhil Bharatiya Ayurvika Sanstha. Uh -huh. Then it should have been translated as All yeah. India Institute of right. Life Sciences. Very right, sir. Or holistic, we'll take or holistic life sciences. <laughs> holistic lifestyle yeah. sciences yeah. is very yeah. good now. Yeah. Yeah. I will fight for this for changing yeah. the you, you get it. Yeah. I'll do that. Thank you. Sir, so you don't need to fight. Just advise them. Yeah. <laughs> I will advise them. <laughs>